Good morning, I am Jean Boulevard and I'm doing a joint PhD with Polytechnique Montréal, Le Mans Université, in collaboration with Safran and Craft Engines. Today I will uh, talk about 3D printed porous material optimally graded for broadband absorption of sound. And this work has been done in collaboration with all these people you see on the slide. Let's start with a short context introduction. If you want to reduce the noise level, for instance, in, the, in a room, you can put acoustic materials on its walls. This acoustic material can be made of porous materials, for instance. Uh, when you look at the absorption coefficient of a homogeneous porous material, uh, what you see is that the absorption coefficient is quite high in the high frequency range, which is good. But due to the inherent loss process of porous materials, the absorption coefficient is low, well, very low sometimes, in the low frequency range. Moreover, the absorption coefficient is not perfect. Uh, there are some ripples in this absorption coefficient. One way to get a higher absorption coefficient using porous materials is to use graded porous materials. In the literature, what we can see is that the multilayer porous materials are well described. We know how to predict their behavior, how to optimize them, and how to, to manufacture them. The problem with the multilayers is that they are composed of a few number of layers, meaning that their gradient might be not the optimal one. One way to get rid of this problem is to use continuously graded porous materials. But the thing is that in the literature, there is no uh, optimization procedure for continuously graded porous materials, and we don't know how to manufacture them with a good control of the microstructure. In this work, we will optimize continuously graded porous materials using a conjugate gradient algorithm for their optimization and 3D printing for their manufacturing. At the end, what we want is to control the entire design procedure. So let's start with the porous material we are considering. This is a, what we call a micro lattice that you can see uh, on the screen. So the geometry is very simple to describe because it's just described by the diameter of the fibers and the spacing of the fibers. And also uh, you have very simple relation between the diameter of the fibers, the spacing of the fibers, and for instance here the porosity on the left of the screen and also the, spo the pore size is very simple to describe. Of the graded porous material, we first need to be able to describe the intrinsic behavior of the porous material. To do so, we are using the johnson shampoo alar lafarge model, considering that the behavior of the porous material is the same as that of an equivalent fluid described by an, uh, an equivalent density and an equivalent bulk modulus. This model uh, depends on six GCL parameters describing the microstructure of the material. Parameters and frequency. By means of a two-scale asymptotic homogenization method implemented in a finite element code, we can compute the GCL parameters of a porous material. In this way, we obtain a, a, a model linking the diameter of the fibers and the spacing of the fibers to the uh, equivalent fluid parameters. Then uh, we need to uh, predict the behavior of the graded porous material. To do so, we are using the wave splitting transfer green function method uh, described in the literature. So basically, we start with uh, constitutive uh, relations. Uh, what you see here is that the density and the bulk modulus depends on x, which is the position in the slab. And uh, with uh, this method, we can get uh, a differential, uh, a first order differential equation. And at the end, we can obtain the reflection coefficient of the porous material. Now that we are able to predict the behavior of the continuously graded porous material, we can optimize its uh, microstructure. To do so, we are using a nonlinear conjugate gradient algorithm, uh, minimizing a cost function j. So this cost function that you see here uh, is basically the sum of the, of, the, of the modulus of the reflection coefficient, um, meaning that if j is equal to zero, the reflection is also equal to zero in the frequency range of interest, and then the absorption coefficient is equal to one in the frequency range of interest. Uh, this cost function depends on the spacing of the fibers, uh, which 
varies uh, through the thickness of the material. That's the reason why there is a X here. So the conjugate gradient algorithm is an iterative method, meaning that we start with a first uh, guess profile here in blue, and then uh, we uh, have some iteration to get the best uh, the best uh, profile. So the iteration depends on the gradient of the cost function because well this is the conjugate gradient algorithm, and the, meaning that we no need to compute the gradient of the cost function. And the good thing is that we are able to derive the expression of the gradient of the cost function. So just here. And yeah, we know how to compute all the terms of the gradient of the cost function, meaning that we can run the conjugate gradient algorithm. So let's start with a first example, optimization example. Uh, we consider a 13 mm thick slab and the diameter of the fibers is 100 micrometers. So we will uh, optimize the spacing of the fibers. So uh, in black, what you can see is the absorption coefficient of the homogeneous porous material. Uh, so it, it's a reference uh, with all the ripples that we saw in the introduction. And then we will optimize this material uh, with two types of gradient. The first one in green is a monotonic gradient. You can see in the right uh, side of, of the slide. So the porosity, uh, the corresponding porosity of this material is just decreasing. So you see this profile in green here. The absorption coefficient of this material is very high in the, in the frequency range of interest and has one, two, three, four maxima of absorption in the frequency range of interest. It means that this kind of monotonic profile uh, is able to increase the absorption coefficient, but not to uh, vary the position of the absorption maximum. Now we go to the red profile that has been optimized by the method we described before. So the corresponding porosity profile to the optimized uh, fib fiber sp uh, spacing correspond to a global decrease of the porosity, but with five oscillations that are add to uh, this decreasing profile. These five uh, oscillations will allow to tune five uh, modes of the porous uh, layer. We know that because when you see the look at the absorption coefficient of the corresponding material, you see that there are now five absorption maxima in the frequency range of interest, meaning that the five absorption maximum of the green, the, the green uh, curve has been lowered in to be is, is forced to be put in the frequency range of interest. After this uh, numerical example, let's switch to the uh, experimental world. So the, the micro lattice we, we presented can be 3D printed. Do so, we use a fused deposition modeling technique, uh, which allows to, to print this kind of material. Uh, if we change the diameter of the nozzle of the 3D printer, we can change the diameter of the fibers. But as it's a physical component, the, the nozzle uh, of the printer, it's not easy to obtain a gradient of uh, fiber diameter. So instead, we will uh, play with the spacing of the fiber once again. And to do so, we optimize what we call here the infill factor. So this is just a numerical command uh, that takes the uh, integer's value between 0 and 100%, and which allows to tune the um, spacing of the fibers. Uh, if you are interested in knowing how to obtain the GCL parameters of such uh, material experimentally, you can check this, uh, this paper here. So the first uh, experimental uh, optimization example uh, is here. So we still have a 30 millimeter fixed lab. The nozzle diameter is now 400 micrometers. And what we will optimize, the graded parameter, is the infill factor now and not directly the spacing of the fibers. So uh, the absorption coefficient of the homogeneous materials is here in, in black. 
And what we want is to maximize the absorption between 2.5 kHz and 5.5 kHz. So it's a frequency range that is higher than uh, the first the, the frequency of the first absorption maximum of the homogeneous line. So uh, what you see is the color lines are the, well, the optimized graded porous material, either by simulation or by experimental measurement in, in red, so with a good, very good correlation between the two. In the right side of the, of the slide, you see the optimized profile. And uh, you see that there are two profiles. The green one is a continuous profile that has been uh, optimized because, as we said before, we optimize the continuous profile. But when we go to the experimental work, we had to uh, discretize this profile to be able to manufacture it. So that's why you can see here the blue profile that is just discretization of the, of the continuous profile. So for this uh, second experimental example, we, are, we still deal with the same uh, 30 meter fixed lab. But what we want to do now is to increase the absorption coefficient for frequency lower than the, the frequency of the first absorption maximum of the homogeneous lab. So again, here are the simulation and measurement. Uh, in, in the measurement is in red, the simulation in blue. And uh, we see that we can indeed obtain a perfect absorption for a frequency uh, lower than the frequency of the homogeneous slab. In the right uh, side of the slide is uh, optimize the corresponding porosity profile, uh, optimize. And what you see here is that, uh, well, basically the, on the left side of, of the profile, so where the incident wave ar arrives first, the porosity is quite low and then the porosity increases. It just means that uh, with this kind of profile, we just tune one, f one uh, mode of the porous lab, uh, allowing to decrease uh, this, uh, the frequency of the first absorption maximum. To conclude, the microstructure or manufacturing parameters gradient optimization algorithm has been adapted from an inverse characterization method, and its aim is to maximize the absorption coefficient within a frequency re uh, region. A numerical and experimental results showed an important increase of the absorption coefficient in the targeted zone and even quasi-perfect absorption in the targeted uh, frequency, ran uh, frequency range. Uh, the optimized profiles are not monotonic, whereas most graded porous materials are, uh, such as uh, trapezoidal um, forms that you can see in anechoic rooms. Uh, the free graded profile allows the finer tuning of the resonance than the monotonic profiles, as we just said. And the number of ripples in the graded profile is equal to the number of tuned resonances of the porous lab. And uh, thank you for your attention.